Welcome everybody, it is the One to Go Show, it is Puka, it is Hall of Fame night in Hibbing, and we're going to get to a special interview here with a very special guest in just a second. I just want to uh, give a shout out to one of our longtime sponsors, Ellen and Radier, Masabi.com, just not even a mile down the road. If you're looking for a job, or your husband needs a job, or your brother-in-law needs a job, or your sister-in-law needs a job, Masabi.com will be in the show notes, just click on it, they need 30 people yesterday so that's the place to go and like i said you're less move up to heaven you're less than a mile from the track it's a great place all right we're at the track in kind of an indiscreet location pete wallers getting inducted congratulations into the hall of fame tonight so, guy from my generation guy that i watched race a lot of laps here uh one of the most kind thoughtful genuine people you'll ever meet and you know i mean that and this will be a fun interview, I think. So, okay. So honored to be on. <laughs> so let's bring it way back to that first race, the week leading up, the anticipation. What do you remember about racing a street stock back in 1985? As a 15-year-old, maybe earlier than that. I didn't. <laughs> in the 80s. Yeah. What do you remember? Uh, I, what I remember about that race, it was a 77 Chrysler Newport, it was a big boat, and in the first corner, uh, I got ran into, and I remember how loud and violent it was in the car to get hit in a race car, so that, that's my first memory of racing, but I was very nerve-wracking. Yeah, I bet it was. Yeah. So you did street stocks for hobby stocks, whatever they called it back then, for all of them? Five years. Five years. Five. Then to the super stocks. Yep. Yep. Okay. And that's, you really, you really got a major name there, right? Yes. Two national titles, right? 90 and 91? Yeah. Tell me about that. Well, it, it started in 1989, and uh, we got an old Sanger car from John Harper for about $200 at the chassis. Um, we Sanger took, car? That's a Sanger, an old name yeah, there. Sanger oh, chassis. Oh, oh, oh. And we took that car and to the Pierce household, Danny Pierce, John, Roseanne, John Jr. Um, we built that car in their garage uh, with their tools and their help. Um, we ended up that year, I think 1989, we had five wins with that car. It took us half the year to get, to get the car figured out. We actually had to move the rear end laterally in the car. I remember that change we made and once we did that, um, it started to pick up and we, we won a few races and were competitive in a lot and that just lit the, got us going for the next two years. So you've told me in the past, we talked about back then now, for those of you that are young, much, much younger than Pete and I, there was a claim rule. They could claim your engine if you placed whatever top 10 or whatever, whatever. Yeah, top, top 10, 10, they could claim your engine. So you couldn't be just be, you know, some just off the wall guy, but you had to be somewhat competitive and they claim your engine. You always told me the cam was the key. Tell me about the cam. Well, the cam was the key. That What we ran back then uh, was a hydraulic cam when everybody was running solid with their cams. And there was a, uh, a duration, a height and duration rule, uh, cam rule on it, so you could only run certain cams. Well, we ran, uh, I could say it now, we ran an ISKI cam back then. We were running in Superior, and one of our biggest competitors, Mike Rich, was a great, oh, yeah, great sure. competitor. We were beating him all the time, so obviously we had to have something special, and, and so he claimed the motor, and, and we paid the 350 bucks instead of taking the other motor, taking his motor, yeah. and and what had happened there is then they spec the cam, and the cam was so worn out, they thought it was a cam dynamics cam at the time, and they didn't even get the right information. So, But that was Mike Volker. Mike Volker was our engine builder. Mike okay. and Mary helped me tremendously. He stayed up late at night. Uh, you couldn't balance the rods or anything at the time, but he would get a, a bunch of stock rods, weigh them all, get everything as close as he could. Um, but, but the idea behind that cam was that you, you didn't have to adjust the lifters at all and you could work on the suspension. That was the trick. Ah, okay. That's, okay. that's why we did. So, leaf springs back then though? Yeah. Leaf yeah. springs. <laughs> so think about that, racers. Leaf springs, two national titles. Unbelievable. So, <laughs> that's great. All right. Um, so we're at Hibbing Raceway, you're being inducted into, obviously, and congratulations, I don't think I said congratulations, but congratulations. So you're being inducted into the Hibbing Raceway Hall of Fame. What, what's your favorite or that one moment at Hibbing that really stands out above all the others? Because you had a lot of wins here, obviously. Well, obviously the Hibbing Raceway is very special to me. Um, my dad started racing. The, the, honestly, it's other races here for me that, that come to mind first. Watching my dad when I was a kid, I think it was five or six when he was racing, but I still remember that. Watching Zach win the Labor Day shootout, Danny Pierce win the Labor Day shootout. Sure. Um, I think I have been more more excited for that. And obviously, 
And uh, you're a limited shoot-up winner. Yeah. Let's tell everyone. Well, yeah, tell yeah, everyone. Yeah, yeah. In a super do, and a late model? Yes, yes. And a hobby stock? Did they have a hobby stock? Uh, we won the first annual hobby stock invitation. Okay. So, so, yeah. Yeah, so, but, but it's hard to do. Anyone that wins Labor Day will tell you that. We tried for a long time. It was hard. And, um, those wins I'll always remember. All right. So I kind of skipped over your late model. So 92? Yep. yep. The red Budweiser Iron Trail Motors Zinnies well, car. You're missing a car. We had the Raver and the orange Raver. Oh, the orange, that the blue still, 71. That's, that's right. Still, oh, that's was, right. Yeah, still, still leaf spring, still a leaf spring car, uh, single leaf coil over. Um, we had a good year. I think we won eight or nine shows that that rookie season, top ten in Minnesota national points. Um, it, it was it was a great year, transition year. And then towards the end of that year, we were struggling a little bit, and we ordered another chassis, a figures chassis, um, with the Z-Link in the back, and. You know, we crashed, we rolled over, we went into over in Sox Center when we had it on on uh, order. It worked out, we got the car, but we struggled some with that with that car, with the Z-Link car, until we shortened the rear rods and, and did some things to that. And we had we had quite a few good runs and a few features with that team. Okay. And I don't want to glaze over your ASA career, so he he does the dirt late models and you go ASA for Just half a year yeah, or one race? A couple races. A couple, race, couple races. Um, it was a dream of mine to always try it. I know there's a lot of guys in Minnesota right now that can race in that series and just where we live and, and just not the coverage here, you know. I just wanted to do it with something I wanted to do. The late models were getting out of reach for me, the, the money, the technology. Um, I just knew getting older I got a little smarter. I, I thought I got a little smarter and, and looked around and saw who I was racing against and the funds that we were actually competing with at the time and I just I just knew that, that the hand rating was on the wall. So. At that time, we, we fin I financed everything, and you know my goal was to get the best, one of the best of everything, so I could be competitive in the ASA deal if we broke it, figured out then. But long story short, we ended up blowing the motor qualifying at the, at the Milwaukee Mile, and uh, that just it was just too much. So we sold everything, and, and then from there, it was after that, it was working with other team owners and. You know, in the late model class exactly. driving for So what's the last time you were in a car? Provenzino about five years ago? No, it was actually Zach's car, um, probably about three or four years ago. Okay. I, I helped Zach out for a couple nights and we raced um, Grand Rapids and Superior. Okay, but, okay. Yeah. Well, I think I remember that. Yeah, yeah. you were down to Superior, that's yeah. right. I think I remember that now, so yeah. awesome. So obviously Hibbing, we're, we're talking about Hibbing, Hibbing Hall of Fame, one of the original Mazota tracks. What is it about this place? You got the old grandstands. Of course, it used to be the fairgrounds. There's kind of something nostalgic about this place. Well, you know, one of the things that I do appreciate is the history. I grew up here, like I said, five years old. I remember sitting on the horse stables up here, <laughs> I, and that's the truth. I remember we used to. I actually used to stand on them out there and watch. Um, they were torn down. You know, obviously, my dad. I mean, I grew up here. I remember, and I think it was in the early '70s. It was either Joey Chitwood or a. Or a uh, Daredevil show where they had cars on two wheels off ramps. Really? And, uh, oh, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you, that, that's aging me a bit, but um, <laughs> I do remember that. But but the Hibbing Raceway, my home track, uh, there's been so many good memories here with my dad and my family and Zach, and um, it's just really, really special to us. Yeah, so let's talk about Zach. Guy I consider a friend, Zach. How proud of him are you? Well, I, I couldn't be more proud of, of Zach. You know, Zach, I, I stranded Zach for a lot of years running around uh, racing myself. And as people know, and he knows that how long it takes and the dedication it takes. But he paid a price. And, uh, so I couldn't be more proud of him. I mean, he's a great competitor. He, he's, the late model he's in now is a 2006. Um, you know, he, he's, he's done some things to it himself. And to be competitive with that old car, he's won a couple races. Right. As, far as, as far as the racing goes, I, I could be proud of it. Dad and partner is to Kendra and the grandkids, two grandkids, and, and uh, one on the way. Oh, one on the way! Yeah. Oh, congrats! Yeah. I didn't know Thank that. You. Okay, Thank congrats, so, Zach. All right, yeah. awesome. Thank you. Okay. So, yeah, could not be more proud. Right. So, last question, personally, what does this mean to you? I mean, Hall of Fame. I mean, and you deserve it. There's no question. I mean, but what does it mean? I mean, you've had all. You've had what? Well, like, um, I texted you. I don't know. How long has it been? Six weeks? Four weeks since they announced it? Yeah. What does it mean to you personally? Well, I, I think I mentioned to you earlier that I. I get through it without crying. So it's, uh, it, it means the world to me. For a kid from Kelly Lake, um, low budget team, always, uh, it means the world. It really does. I'm, I'm honored. And the group of people that I've joined in with this year, unbelievable. Right. I, I grew up 
watching those guys, looking up to them. Um, I raced against Harry and Jeff, great competitors and great people. And then, and then with Billy and Debbie going at the same time, and I mean, I think they uh, mentioned in my speech that they're probably tired of babysitting me all the way here. <laughs> so, but it's a true that I couldn't be, I couldn't be happier. Than Ron. All right, awesome. Couldn't be happier for you. Congratulations. Thank you. Great honor. You're gonna to want to share this if you got, you know. You know, if you if you got if you got someone in your family or other race fans in the '90s, you're going to want to share this. Pistol Pete Wallers, Kenley Lake, Minnesota, into the Hall of Fame. We'll catch you all in the next video.